Hey, good evening to everyone. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the clarity of scripture, right? This is the fourth characteristic of scripture. We talked about uh, the authority of scripture. We talked about as well the inerrancy of scripture. And uh, I talked about, uh, or tonight I'll be talking about clarity of scripture. Uh, the question that's asked tonight is do only Bible scholars understand the Bible rightly? So again, or can only Bible scholars understand the Bible rightly? So that is kind of the, the question that's guiding this discussion on clarity of scripture tonight. Um, again, you have every opportunity to actually engage through comments. Uh, so you make the comment on Facebook or on the YouTube channel if you're on a YouTube channel. So I do apologize for starting a few minutes late as well. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here now and uh, we're going to get right to this. Right. So. What are we talking about regarding the clarity of scripture? Like I said, when it comes to that uh, that question, can only Bible scholars understand the Bible rightly? Um, I think majority of us would, would agree that um, no. And, and based on the word only, you know, can only Bible scholars know. Uh, when it comes to clarity of scripture, that the thought is that in the reading of scripture, that we will come to a, a, a clear understanding of what the actual scripture is saying, right? But there's more to it that we want to that I want to outline tonight and discuss you know, or talk about. Um, you know, again, the guiding um, or the guidance that I'm going by tonight is from the uh, Wayne Grudem uh, systematic theology. Um, I've pointed it out before. I don't know if you guys can see it very clearly with the uh, light shining on it or not. But the uh, very good book, um, you know, is one is not a, a go to meaning that it's not the authority regarding uh the bible there's other things that, that you can read regarding systematic theology to compare but uh my thing is to uh, uh use this because this is one of the um i guess foremost uh, uh when it comes to the books you know on this subject that, that a lot of people actually gravitate to or grab and, and read and study right so again clarity of scripture so some of the things i highlighted there's some things in them Hard to that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. That's from Second Peter chapter three, verse fifteen through sixteen. Uh, the reason why Rain, Wayne Grudem uh, made that statement is a simple fact that is stating that there are some things in the scriptures that are hard to understand. Now, I'll, I'll go to this actual passage of scripture because he's going to be referring to the writings of, of Paul, right? So. Let's go again to first, or excuse me, second Peter chapter three. So, and it, it went to John. I don't know why I went there. So second Peter three. All right. So, and we're going to verse 15 and 16. So when we look at these matters, it says, and, um, and I think he's wrong. In this, so hold on. All right. Yeah, there we go. And count the pieces of our Lord. Uh, as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. So then it goes on and says, there are some things in them that are hard to understand. So it's not uh, um, when it comes to the scriptures as far as clarity, and this is the argument for clarity, it's not saying that these things are impossible to understand. It said there are some things that are hard to understand, which the ignorant, and unstable twist to their own destructions, uh, destruction as they do to other scriptures. So the point of the matter is, is not impossible when it comes to the word of God to understand. Um, and then we find also that the ignorant and unstable twist to things and to their own demise, to their own destruction, uh, as they do to other scriptures. So when we're arguing, arguing for clarity, I want people to understand that, you know, that question like I, like I asked in the beginning, can only Bible scholars understand the Bible rightly? That this would support no, it's not only Bible scholars, but you know, everyone can understand regarding the scripture. So, like I said, there's more to it because we'll be looking at uh first Corinthians uh chapter two as well and what it has to say. So just keep in mind, it doesn't say that these things are, are impossible to understand regarding scripture. And the context here is talking about Paul's letters and people who read those letters and that are ignorant and unstable and how they twist them to the destruction. But in this case, it's saying that, you know, it's hard. Some things are hard to understand. 
So when it comes to the Bible frequently affirming its own clarity, right, it does. So, for instance, let's look at a passage of scripture like uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter six. And again, just to remind you, if you just got on, uh, we're talking about the clarity of scripture, whether or not, you know, uh, people outside of Bible scholars, you know, can understand what the scripture says. So. Uh, all right. So and I want us to, to kind of meditate on this and understand it. So if we start with verse four of Deuteronomy six, uh, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your all your might. And these things, excuse me, and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. So I'll stop there. The point of the matter is, is that if scripture was impossible to understand by anybody else other than biblical scholars, if there wasn't clarity in scripture, right, then this wouldn't have been taught at all. This here is actually for the family unit. So in, in the word of God is meant to be taught and spoken about within the family unit. Think about all these things that it says. So it says, you shall teach them diligently to your children. So in that case, again, it's not impossible to understand. It may be hard, but not impossible because we're, uh, although this is the Israelite community that this is being spoken to, it still uh, is for us today regarding teaching our children these things. So again, this is a way of life. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down, when you rise. So this is a daily, you know, uh, meditation or, you know, a process of proclamation regarding God's word and teaching of it. Right. So, again, that's support for there's clarity in scripture, you know, our scripture is clear or there's clarity in scripture for everyone to actually understand. So I got uh, also passages of scripture like Psalms uh, chapter one verse uh, two. So you could go there. And this may be a really quick uh, discussion tonight. So there's some questions I want to ask at the end with the hopes that people respond. So if we look at chapter one, verse two, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law, he meditates day and night. So again, we're looking at uh, this individual. And if I start with verse one, it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in, his, in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. To meditate, again, that word means to, to growl or to utter or to proclaim, right? So there's some type of utterance that come from the lips of an individual when they meditate. That's the, the Hebrew meaning of meditate. That's the intention, right? So one can't proclaim anything unless they understand it. So, and that, again, this is supporting the fact that you no know, uh, scripture has clarity for you know all those who who come to to seek the Lord will actually understand it right. Um, I'll make a uh, another one here. You know I, I'll uh, show another scripture. Psalms nineteen uh, seven. There's another one. So let's see if I get right directly to this. So Psalms nineteen. Let's look at verse seven. It says the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving a soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. So again, so making wise the simple. This is not talking about the ones that are unintelligent uh, or you know, uh, who lacks uh, intellectual ability, but the one who lacks sound judgment, who is prone to make mistakes and who is easily led astray. That's what this actually referring to. So um, let's see some some other ones that supports the clarity of Scripture where is beyond biblical scholars who can actually understand it again that's the question that i'm posing tonight to help us you know unpack clarity of scripture right and understand it and then i'm gonna get to the definition uh that wayne grudem actually gives that way we uh come to a understanding of what's actually being said so um i'll read what he, he wrote in here regarding jesus he says uh jesus saying anything like this um uh, I see how your problem arose. The scriptures are not very clear on that subject. Uh, instead, whether he is speaking to scholars or untrained common people, his responses always assume 
that the blame for misunderstanding any teaching of scriptures not be placed on scriptures themselves, one of those who misunderstand or fail to accept what is written. Again and again, he answers questions with statements like, have you not read? Have you never read in the scriptures? And look, let me give you some references to that. The, the, as far as have you not read Matthew 12, 3 um, and 5, Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 and Matthew chapter 22, verse 31. Uh, the you no, know, when Jesus says, Have you never read in the scriptures? You can find that in Matthew chapter 21, verse 42. And then he says, Sometimes he says, This you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. And you look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 29 on that. So when it comes to these things, the argument is that, um, um, basically he's saying that in a day when it's common for people to tell us how hard it is to interpret scripture rightly. We would do well to remember that not once in the Gospels do we hear Jesus saying anything like, I see how your problem arose. Scriptures are not very clear on that subject. Jesus didn't say that. And that's why. And I should have read that first part before to kind of give us an understanding of where I was going with this. Right. But anyway, you got the references. That's what Jesus said. He doesn't place the blame on the scriptures themselves as far as not being clear. The issue is usually misunderstanding the hardness of heart or whatever it is. And, and that's the, the idea that's actually given here. Um, also, a argument that scripture is clear, you know, to us is that it wasn't written to the upper echelon of people, you know, the biblical scholars and stuff like that of that time. Right. Uh, if you look at it, Paul, uh, when he wrote, Peter, when he wrote John, when he wrote um, and whoever else, you know, have writing in the New Testament, they actually wrote the congregation of people. It was meant to be read by the people. So, you no, know, um, it was meant to be read by whoever the leader was to the people with the understanding that they would actually understand what is being said. So that's another point regarding the, the, uh, the clarity of scripture as well. So and then finally, um, when we look at uh, passages like Second Peter, <coughs> excuse me, Second Peter chapter uh, one, verse 20. And this is one I've pointed out before regarding our defense on why we believe the, uh, the testament of the scriptures. Right. Or why we believe what we believe. So and what they pointed out here or what is pointed out by uh, Wayne Grudem here is that uh, verse 20 saying, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation for no pro prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the argument here is that he says that Second Peter 1 20 may be uh, may be urged against the view of the clarity of scripture explained in the chat in this chapter. The verse says no prof prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. And someone may claim that this means that the ordinary believer uh, or that ordinary believers are unable to interpret scripture rightly for themselves. It is unlikely, however, that this implication should be drawn from Second Peter chapter one, verse 20 for the verse is probably discussing the origin and not the interpretation of scripture, which it is. It is talking about the origin, how it came about. Right. That it doesn't start with the prophet's own thoughts on things, or own interpretation. What we find is that it's actually. Uh, and it's never not even produced by the will of man, but by men, you know, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So you find that is it, this is God driven, you know, so regarding what we have as the writing of scripture. Right. So now uh, that way we understand that if somebody were to use that argument as far as, oh, you know what it said, you know, it didn't come by one's own inter uh, interpretation. It's talking about the origins of things, not necessarily, you know, interpretation. So when we look at the other thing that's uh, argued here is the moral and spiritual qualities needed for right understanding. So you might get the fact that, hey, you know what, um, that you have to be intellectual, uh, all these other things. You have to be uh, uh, this way, you know, um, or that way in order to understand, understand the scriptures. Right. Believe me, you have unbelievers who don't actually seek the Lord that can read passages of scripture and be able to properly uh, interpret and understand what it actually says. Certain aspects, not all, but certain aspects. Right. So, uh, for instance, Jesus wept. It's clear. Jesus wept. And it's probably clear.
to an unbeliever just as it is a believer why Jesus wept. You know, so there was compassion towards our art was a, a emotion and a display of compassion towards a family that just lost a brother, one a family that he was extremely close to as well. So nothing more, nothing less. But we do know, as I read before, the very first scripture, that there are some people who are ignorant and, and, and basically just live in that manner, decide to twist the scripture scriptures to their own destruction. Right. So there are some people who out there who look at Jesus wept and try to twist that. Just like they twist the fact that, you know, Jesus never spoke about homosexuality, even though Jesus talked about the relationship between a husband and a wife, a man, you know, shall leave his his father and his mother, you know. So he talks about those dynamics directly. But, oh, because Jesus didn't directly address homosexuality, I'm going to tell you that he was OK with it. That's the twisting of scripture, you know, and it's going to lead to those individual there are their their destruction, the individuals that teach it. So when we look at uh, this other point that moral and spiritual qualities uh, needed for right understanding, we're looking at as far as passages of scripture like First Corinthians uh, uh, chapter uh, two. So, and what it says. So, and what we have here is, uh, let's see. I want to hit just the, the actual verse itself that we want to look at. And you could go and read this first, you know, matter of fact, the entirety of chapter two, uh, and as far as what it's saying. But we look at uh, verse 14, for instance, it says the natural person does not accept the things of, of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So we know that whatever is being discerned it is, is some, it's a spiritual thing. So it has to have you no know, has to be an individual who actually seeks out the word of God, where the spirit you know, of God, the Holy Spirit illuminates these truths to that individual. What we're talking about is just a natural person, the one who and a natural person already think there's you no know, the gospel is foolishness anyway. So that's why I wanted to point that out. So now when we look at this moral issue and things like that and look from the moral standpoint, if you are if you are a, a Christian, you know, uh, brother or sister. Right. So and you're trying to interpret scripture or look at these things. Don't think because, you know, I have this block or this lock on understanding these things because, you know, I'm actually I sin not living in, in sin, but I sin because there's still a lot of people, too, who live under this understanding or have this understanding that, hey, I've sinned and I'm, that's why I'm having this mental block and not able to understand scripture. There's people as well who think that they need some type of uh, uh, college degree or, or be, uh, um, let's just say, you know, some type of uh, you know, college itself in order to actually understand what the Bible says. So God will use whoever he, whom he desires to use. So scholars aren't the only ones who know this. The ones that have been through seminary or through some type of schooling aren't the only ones who actually know how to interpret scriptures. So my brother, so many of you guys know him, hasn't been to school or anything like that. What it is, is that the, the spirit of God teaching him. And then as well, where we where I become a supplement as a teacher as well, along with other things that he reads and stuff like that. But he's learned that process, you know, as far as the spirit leading him through that process. Right. So he's one that I can I can speak to that I can actually go to and we could talk about the interpretation of things. There aren't many people I can say that about because a lot of people feel that they're basically locked out of that type of information because they haven't been to seminary, you know, or they haven't been on the toolage of a pastor. Script, scripture is clear enough. And that's what we're talking about tonight, that any individual who has a desire to know God, that God was, will illuminate that truth to him. It doesn't absolve us uh, or a person of being taught. So I'll get to that later on. But it, it, I am arguing the fact, and that's what Wayne Grudem is arguing, and, and I totally agree with him, of course, that scripture is clear enough for the one who's seeking God to actually understand it. And I just want to use my brother as an example because, again, he's the only one that I know that actually search in that mat matter of fact. No, nah, there's more. My um, the entire congregation back at home that are, that we grew up with, none of them went through seminary at all. My mom is one, but she's she's you know through Christian maturity, not only being taught 
she's a teacher as well. So, you know, and people might have issues with that, but she does. She teaches uh, Sunday school and stuff like that. So we talk about it, you know, uh, quite often. But the point of the matter is, is that she's so-called unschooled by, you know, the uh, uh, by those that are intellectual, so to speak. You know, she would be considered, you know, from the Pharisee standpoint, like they consider the disciples untrained, you know, type deal. However, she knows the word of God. You know, so the, the point of the matter is it the, the clarity of scripture is accessible or knowing the word of God is accessible to everyone who seeks the Lord. It, it is everyone who has a desire to seek God. It will be made known. So and that's something that we got to understand. I promise you that because that's what we just read. A person that's spiritual. Right. So, again, led by the spirit in order to understand because the spirit who actually teaches. So when we look at these things, um, let's look at a definition for uh, for um, clarity of scripture. So the definition given here is the clarity of scripture means that the Bible is written in such a way that its teachings are able to be understood by all who will read it, seeking God's help and being willing to follow it again. All those who read it, seeking God's help and willing to follow it. So that's the person, whoever seeks God and willing to follow it is a person who's actually spiritual. So, and again, if you go and read uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, uh, read that chapter in its entirety, you'll see that who knows the mind of God except for the spirit. So uh, who knows one mind except for their spirit? That's, that's the example Paul gives. And that's why we see that. So scripture can be known by you. And that should be of great confidence to you if you're listening to this and, and and have this, you know, understanding that, you know, I have trouble. I, I, I need somebody to teach me because I don't know. I'm incapable of knowing all these blocks that you place in front of yourself, thinking that you're unable to actually know the same things that I know, you know, and I am school. You know, so it's in it's a lot of school. I believe it's like eight years that I went through, maybe 10. I don't know. Three degrees worth, all that stuff. Right. Does that make me any better than anybody else? Absolutely not. Because I, I could have all that schooling, just like some of the other guys that are out there and still use scripture in a manner that is ignorant to distort it from my own means, which I don't. So I have a high view of scripture and a higher view of who God is. Right. So, again, that's what we have. So why do people misunderstand scripture then when they actually have it? I, I mentioned it before. A lot of times is that their failure is they purposely do it or they have hardened hearts. If you read the gospel of uh, Mark, that was one of the things when we did a Bible study a few years back on Mark. We, we noted that each time that Jesus were teaching the disciples, that the disciples were just dull of hearing. They, they didn't understand these things. If you read John you can there's markers in John to where he says things like he didn't they didn't realize this as disciples. Right. Until after Jesus's death. Matter of fact, in chapter two, it talked about it as far as Jesus uh, saying that, you know, tear down his temple in three days of uh, build it back up, you know. And, and John said, hey, we didn't realize this, that he was referring to his death and resurrection, you know, um, and I, I'm paraphrasing. But if you read chapter two of John's gospel, that's what he says. So those are notes that tell you at that time they didn't understand this. And then when the Holy Spirit of God, you know, or when the Holy Spirit actually revealed this to them, that OK, I remember this because that's the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But people misunderstand because, you know, and it, it could be a, uh, more than a few things. People like to distort scripture, you know, for their own personal gain. Uh, sometimes it's just a uh, harden of heart, you know, so dull you know stuff like that so i, I read this said during jesus lifetime his own disciples at times failed to understand the old testament and jesus own teaching matthew chapter 15 verse 16 is one if you look at mark chapter 4 verse 10 through 13 mark chapter 6 verse 52 mark chapter 8 verse 14 through 21 mark chapter 9 verse 32 so you kind of see what i'm saying if you go to mark you'll see this all the time mark highlights those things right so Again, um, what he says here, it could be uh, this misinterpretation could be a lack of faith or a hardening of heart. So and that's what we see uh, some uh, sometimes in the gospel. Oftentimes is either one or the, the other. Right. So um, 
And then you look at this, said, furthermore, there were times in the early church when Christians did not understand or agree on teachings of the Old Testament or about the letters written by the apostles. Acts chapter 15 is one. They had to come you know, have this council regarding the, the issues that were going on. Right. So accusation that, that what Paul was doing. So, you know, and you can read that um, Peter's misunderstanding uh, Galatians chapter uh, two, verse 11 through 15. Him and Paul or uh, Paul had to actually uh, uh, um, hold him accountable for for those things. Right. For what Peter was doing. Um, so, yeah. So when it comes to these things, we do misunderstand. But how are we able to come to a correct understanding? We come to a correct understanding through two words that I want to throw out there. Hermeneutics and exegesis of the scripture. So hermeneutics is basically these are uh, principles of interpretation. Right. What hermeneutics, what they what it is, is is the study of the correct methods of interpretation, uh, especially in. In other words, is that there are certain methods of interpret uh, certain methods that we actually use in order to uh, properly interpret scripture. So like when you look at the studies that I do in the morning, right, I try my best to adhere to those uh, uh, the study of you know, this this type of way, the hermeneutics, the where I bring in, you know, what it means to the audience, the, the difference and similarities, theological principles, and then how to apply. That's just a short way. I got a longer way uh, using the Logos Bible app, right, where I look at people and places, uh, commentaries, all these different things where you're fat gathering in order to properly understand what the writer is actually saying, the intended meaning behind what's actually being said. And we can't do that without actually knowing background information and things like that. So when it comes to exegesis, that's the other word. Exegesis is the process of interpreting a text of scripture. So when we, when I was doing the uh, um, uh, verse of the day, that's a text of scripture that I actually look at. And then you see me doing our, the hermeneutics, the actual going, you know, the context of it looking back at what it meant, blah, 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 to get a correct understanding of that. So that's what we have, hermeneutics and exegesis. So I read that again. The, and these are principles of interpretations or guidelines that we're encouraged to use in order to grow our skills in this area of proper interpretation, right? Hermeneutics is a study of correct methods of interpretation, especially the interpretation of scripture. And exegesis is the process of interpreting a text of scripture. So and that's what we do. Right. So or at least should be doing. We shouldn't be reading scripture and then take it so literal then that we run away with it. We can't do that. There's a lot of people who are actually teach in that manner, though, is that if the Bible says it, that's what. It, yeah, the Bible might say it, but there may be some meaning behind it. And like I've said before, how dare we not look at the meaning of what someone's saying or trying to understand the meaning of what somebody is trying to convey? Because if we don't look for meaning, then we can misinterpret everything that they actually try to say. And that's what God honest truth. We, we see it every day in the media. You know, an individual can actually say, give an interview uh, uh, about something and they will pull this one clip. And when they pull that one clip, it's meant to actually be twisted or to uh, basically be used in a manner to support one's thought without knowing what it, what was said. For me, I read a lot of uh, quotes from uh, um you know, football players, basketball players, or whatever it is. And what I mean is from their interviews. You'll see later on down the road when somebody, you know, when a, a media personality asks another pro player about what this pro player said, that a lot of times they're going by what's actually that quotation. And then they're going to pull a snippet out of that individual's quotation to kind of play this game of back and forth. So, you know, and I just saw this between uh, two of my, uh, favorite players for the Steelers, right? So one retired, one still playing, and is talking about, oh, yeah, you know what? These guys are coddled, you know, type of deal. Ask the guy that's currently playing, no, nah, I don't think that way. I disagree type deal. But where's the context of it? They just, you know, and that's the point. We can't do that with scripture. You know, look, I'm a okay. I'm not okay with it, but I'd rather for it to be with what we say than with, uh, with what God says. Because when we actually um take scripture and we twist it what we essentially are doing is messing with the reputation of god so and that people have to be careful in that that's why uh when i uh people point to second timothy uh chapter three if i'm not mistaken as far as study to show thyself approved you know a workman 
you know, who should not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, right? So the point of rightly dividing the word of truth is that that's proper interpretation, you know, and I'm not saying that's what the Greek words mean. That's what it's conveying. You don't want to mess with God's word in the manner to where you twist it for your own personal matter, gain, or whatever it is. You teach what it says and you find the proper meaning, you know, so, and that's, that's, that's our role as teachers, because that's what I'm getting to now. The, the idea of practical encouragement from this doctrine, right? So that's the, one of the final points. Um, well, actually, there's probably a few more. So the encouragement that we receive, right? So it says uh, the doctrine of clarity of scripture, therefore, has a very important and ultimately very encouraging practical implication. It tells us that where uh, tells us that where there are areas of doc doctrinal or ethical disagreement, for example, over baptism or predestination or church church government, there are only two possible causes for these disagreements. On the one hand. It may be that we are seeking to make affirmations where scripture itself is silent. So, and I love what he said here, because this is something that we got to understand. I believe all preachers need to understand this or teachers. He says this, in such cases, we should be more ready to admit that God has not given us the answer to our quest and to allow for differences of viewpoint within the church. So I'm going to park right here for a second. When he talk about baptism. Because you got groups who say that you need to be baptized, um, basically, uh, or you infant baptism. You know, they believe in infant baptism. I don't. The Bible's silent on it, really. But they have a portion of scripture that they pull from Acts regarding like households being baptized, where they got to be including kids. And, and what it does, it causes an issue with the personal affirmation that Jesus is Lord and has risen from the dead, right? So we read that out of Romans chapter uh, uh, chapter 10. So there's a dilemma there with that. So therefore, I don't believe in infant baptism as a means of salvation, you know, that an infant needs to be baptized in order to be, you know, if they were to die and that, you know, as an infant in order to be, uh, uh, to uh, basically be guaranteed you know, a spot in heaven, pretty much a guarantee to be in heaven with the Lord. Right. I don't believe that the Bible doesn't teach that. But the Bible is also silent as well when it comes to me arguing for the fact that you can't do that. You, you shouldn't do that, you know, because when you look at it, households were baptized. So that probably did include babies. So, again, in these matters, you know, I'm not going to make scripture say what it doesn't say. I have my own understanding of reason, the reason why I believe what I believe, because I do believe that someone for them to enter into the, the presence of the Lord for eternity, that they have to, if they're of, of age and there's no age of accountability per se, but if they're able to, of the volition to understand, you know, uh, you know good and evil, right, you know, and, and have the, the proper knowledge of the word of God, right, so, and I'm talking about those that are of a young age that are able to make this proclamation that Jesus is Lord and has risen from the dead based on the truth of the scriptures, then you know what? That's the means. That That is the means. So, you know, belief, faith in Jesus Christ, that he is Lord and has risen from the dead, right? Baptism does not guarantee you entrance into heaven. There is nothing in scripture that, that uh, actually speaks that. However, people will pull from uh, Peter, I can't remember his first or second Peter, I believe it's first Peter regarding, um, you know, baptism saves, you know, so they'll pull that. And again, that's an interpretative issue where they didn't use proper hermeneutics or exegesis of the scripture in order to understand and clarify to others that this is actually the intended meaning of the author. So because it didn't intend baptism saves and also they'll point out, be baptized and, you know, um, uh, repent and be baptized, you know, acts as another means of saying that, hey, of supporting that. Yep, you got to be baptized in order to be saved. Bible doesn't teach that. So and, and although those statements are made, that's a very literal reading without proper interpretation. So you get what I'm saying with that. Right. However, I will not fight for the uh, brother and sister in Christ if they you know on that matter and sit here and go, well, you're unsaved. And how would how dare on the other side, if they were arguing with me, say, well, you are unsafe if you believe. No, that, that's something that sometimes we just got to admit. Dude, it's not clear on that. 
what's what no what it means so um and then the second point that he makes is this he says uh regarding um as far as uh, issues that we have when it comes to clarity he says on the other hand it's possible that we have made mistakes in our own interpretation of scripture there's a possibility um i just said uh, what i do i admitted to one a couple of days ago regarding leave you or forsake you it wasn't one that was egregious as far as oh my gosh people fall away from the faith it was one that i actually had to clarify because i i basically gave my understanding of it out of its intended meaning so when i looked at the whole and this is out of joshua chapter one when i looked at the leave you or forsake you i looked at the word the word is talking about kind of uh you know power in your hand failing type deal you know uh when you look at the hebrew word but i i took that automatically automatically ran with it and said that hey you know what it's like you know god already has us right is that god's power won't fail and it will keep us perseverance of the saints now that's true perseverance of the saints is true as well as that when god has us, when jesus has us that he won't lose us as well however within that context was i right no i wasn't what <laughs> What he's talking about there is, is basically regarding this promise that he has given the Israelites and a promise to Joshua as far as, you know, uh, in this specific case, the promise was to Joshua. I will not leave you or forsake you. That's basically I won't fail you because Joshua is the new leader of Israel. Right. And taking them into the promised land that that leave you is I won't fail you or abandon you. So that's what the forsake is. So when we put it in a proper context. There's clarity now in the understanding. Ah, he's talking to a leader, you know, and he's telling this leader through and, and by encouraging him and telling him and giving him uh giving him this command to be strong and courageous. That hey, this is what should, should give you supreme confidence. I will not fail you or abandon you. Meaning that if you look at my reputation and what I did with Moses, because that's in here as far as what, what's being conveyed, is that as I was with Moses, I'll be with you look at everything i did my relationship with moses what i did how i listened to him how i intervened and, and things like that right that's the same thing that i'm offering you did i fail in that no so i would never fail or abandon you as well and that's when we get that meaning and understanding it boom it just expands you know it's like one of them lights that you know you pull the cord and it winds up expanding out and you can see the bulb or whatever it is it's almost like i mean it's, it's awesome so, you know, it is. So that's what it's like, is that we have this understanding. But once we get the proper clarity on it, you know, the understanding of the scripture, boom, it expands. Then it goes to the other thoughts and other places to where, oh, man, and it, it helps you. Basically, one, it, it kind of uh, um, let's just say for me, I don't know how it does other people. Just that the uh, Holy Spirit teach me that and expanding my understanding on it. Uh, basically, what it does is just. It caused me to, to love him more. So and uh, uh, motivates me to look, you know, other places as well. So and that's at one point I found myself not feeling that way. And I, I preached on it before, you know, and God has helped me with that. And thank God I'm going back and looking at the books. But anyway, let's get back to the subject. Right. We're talking about sometimes people make mistakes in their interpretation of Scripture. All right. So and I'm almost at the end here. Um one of the things that he I highlighted here that I thought uh, was very encouraging that he said, he said, Christians must never give up to scholarly experts the task of interpreting scripture. They must keep doing it every day for themselves. More now than ever before, we have resources. We have no excuse. Nobody has an excuse. Holy Bible app. You can go and read the Bible there. I hear a lot of people go, yeah, I got to buy a new Bible, whatever. Got a cell phone sitting right in their hand. Download the Holy Bible app. Go to blueletterbible.org. Search on Google Bible, and you can find all these things, right? You got Google Scholar, all these, you know, all sorts of resources that you look at. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, is that when you're doing a, a heavy study on something, just don't go to Google, because you can go to Wikipedia and find things, but it's not necessarily right. It's not necessarily true. You go on other areas in Google and find things, and it's not necessarily true. What you want is peer reviewed information, right? So if you're looking up predestination, for instance, you want to go to Google uh, Scholar, 
Google Scholar has peer-reviewed papers, meaning all your scholars got together, reviewed these things, whatever it is, regarding what somebody wrote, right? So, and if, if something isn't legit, trust me, it'll be outside that community is whatever. And that's what your Google is for. You'll see those uh, those things outside of Google Scholar. You type that in, type in predestination, what you'll find is, boom, papers on predestination. Um, if I can, matter of fact, I'll try to do something real quick. So uh, just to show you, because that's the whole point of what I do is uh, educate um, us, you know, everyone else. The same, you know, education that I have, the same knowledge that I have, I'm trying to pass on to you as well. That way you're you have it. You're equipped. Uh, you're equipped with it. You're armed with it. Right. So all I did was type in Google Scholar, you know, in a search bar of Google, Google Scholar here. Um, you got articles, all that stuff, right? So this is some of the studies that I've done already. You know, sometimes I look at things from a counseling uh, stuff. So let's look at uh, predestination. So predestination, um, let's look at it in Calvinism. So reformed doctrine of predestination, you got all these things. This, peer, this is peer review right here. This is good information right here that you can cite because it has been cited, has been reviewed by people. There's books, stuff like that, that you could go to and take a look at. So that's something that you should, you know, should have and should know. Talked about uh, um, Blue Letter Bible. I have that in my tabs. Type in the verse. So let's look at, uh, um, oh my goodness, I just had something pop up. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians real quick. So, and I've shown this in other videos. Uh, so, you can look at these. You no, know, you can read it from here. It is in a KJV, but you can change it to whatever. But the point of the matter of this is, you no, know, I can look at, for instance, if I want to, if I get to it, let's click on that. So I can look at the words that are in that the original language, which is Greek, right? Here's the Greek words. I can cl I click on a strong reference. So look at the word. What? No, what does it mean? Here's uh, the meaning of the word. It got I, or excuse me, I, one, A, B. Then you got uh, uh, lowercase one. I don't know how they, low, you know, lowercase two, whatever. I don't know what they call those. But anyway, you got everything in here. And what it does, it just refers to this down here. So if I'm looking at, you know, the, the first point, a delegate messenger, one sent forth with orders. I'm looking at it in here, biblical references, all that could show all so look so i got all this that i could go and read things that i could kind of research that help me regarding a, a word or whatever it is that's being used so we have all these things at our fingertips the question is why aren't we using them? why aren't we using them? because i could tell you right now a lot of people are comfortable with somebody who has a degree or somebody who's in a position of authority within their church a teacher a pastor whatever you're okay with them teaching you, you believe everything that they say without even checking. So th that's what it is. Lazy. That's what it boils down to. People are lazy. If, if you can tell me what I need to hear, or if you can tell me the clear interpretation, it's much easier than me going searching for it because I'm dumb. And, may, and some people may not say I'm dumb, but the point is this level of ignorance. I can't do it. You got all this education. That's what God had called you. Nah. No, nah, absolutely not. God called each and every one of us to seek him through his word, right? That That is something that we all need to do. In order to know God, we need to know his word. Therefore, these things that I'm actually pointing out and maybe some other people are pointing out regarding how to properly interpret scripture and leading you through it and asking you to participate in all these different things. This is to equip you in order for you to do that. Whether you are a follower of Truth Ministries, you know, online or in-house are you a follower for you know, uh, new day, new beginnings, whatever ministry or whatever it is? It's still here to equip you in order for you to test what is actually being said and to go in your own personal time to actually do your study. That, that's the point. What greater means uh, to me, it will fill my heart if this comment section was flooded with comments on how, you know, uh, different aspects of the scripture questions you know dialogue pretty much it's not i don't have any comments now doesn't mean that you need to comment but the point of it is is that me personally i love that 
I would love for congregants to come up and say, hey, I got a question for you. You said this, 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 and this. And we get into dialogue. I could stand there and my wife can attest to this because there's times she, she had to kind of remind me of time constraints and pull me away. But I could talk about the Bible all day long. I love questions. Unfortunately, I don't think that you kind of get that understanding from other pastors that are out there. Is I teach. I have the authority to teach. God has given this to me. You believe it. You run with it. This is what it is. And, and we can't. We can't. This is not the, the try you know, to the, the revolutionize Christianity or anything like that. This is who we are. This is what we're supposed to do. What do you think the Bereans did? Paul didn't just come in there and teach. I know Paul sounded the way that he sounded and he taught with this zeal that he had, right? You know, and pressing and persuading people that this, you know, that Jesus is Lord, right? And, and demonstrating it from the Old Testament that he's a fulfillment of all these prophecies. He is the Messiah. He is Christ. He is Yahweh in the flesh. I, I know Paul did that. But guess what? The Bereans, instead of going applauding, go, man, I believe this guy because he's so passionate about it. The Bereans checked. That's what they did. They checked to see what everything Paul said was true. And that's what you should be doing. Everything that's being preached to you, you should be checking to see if this is true. Everything I read out of this book, you should be checking to see if that's true. Everything that I've read, I need to be going back behind and checking to see if I agree with, with Wayne Grudem or not. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. That, that's, that's not a knock against your teacher. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So again, I would say what he said again. Christians must never give up to scholarly experts the task of interpreting scripture. They must keep doing it every day for themselves. Don't give it to me. Don't give it to someone else to feed you. You know what you need to know. And you going, I'm good, man. Thanks. That, mm, num, 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 num. that was good that you just gave me. I can, I don't have to do anything else. Absolutely not. There are some things, and I don't see them in the comment section, probably never will, but there are some things that people have questions about that need to go in the Word of God and see and get the answers for. So whether you ask me, cool. If not, then whatever. But people need to go in the Word of God and seek those out. I am adamant about that, man. You have to seek this knowledge because this knowledge will set you free. It, I, I promise you that, man. Open new ways of, of understanding from the previous ways of old, because that's what happened to me. You know, and it's not telling everybody to step out of the mainstream churches. There are a lot of phenomenal, great teachers, male, female, whatever it is. Right. So are male and female. But there are a lot of great teachers that are out there. You know, now I had to say male and female to clarify because the state of the United States right now and how they kind of. The so-called Christian community, because they're not Christian, how they're proposing that we can look this manner, whether it's queer, lesbian, gay, whatever. Nah, the, no, not at all. They're not proponents of the gospel at all. They're opponents of the gospel is what they are. But anyway, the point of the matter is you got a lot of phenomenal teachers, right? So it's not saying that, hey, you know what, don't listen to them or anything like that. But what it's saying is you need to be motivated to get into the word yourself. What you hear, you test to see if it's correct. So and don't think that you're ignorant, that you're too dumb to know what the word of God actually says. Absolutely not. That's why I'm teaching you tonight on the clarity of scripture. It can be it's clear to you. And uh, uh, I will say this as well. There if it's not clear to you or you feel it's not clear to you, you might want to talk to God regarding or the Holy Spirit regarding him teaching you. You know, that's the thing. And what I mean by talk to him is a matter of it's not saying, oh, you're not teaching me. Ask for help. Ask for help. Spirit, I need you to empower me to understand. And, and if you know I'm still having trouble in that area, help someone, help me uh, uh, send someone to help clarify areas of, uh, of my misunderstanding. So that's the point. All right. So finally, this last section is the role of scholars, right? So uh, I'm going to hit on four things that he mentioned. He says, scholars, their role is they can teach scripture clearly, communicating its content to others and thus fulfilling the office of teacher mentioned in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 28 and Ephesians 4, 11. Absolutely true. So they can teach scripture clearly. 
So that's the role of teachers, right? And, and but it doesn't mean that you just, oh, no, I, I'm ignorant. I stop reading. No, nah, that's not what is conveying. The second one is they can explore new areas of understanding the teachings of uh, understanding the teachings of scripture. This exploration was seldom, if ever, involved denial of the main teachings the church has held to uh, throughout its centuries, but it will often involve the application of scripture to new areas of life. The answering of difficult questions that have been raised by both believers and unbelievers at each new period in history and a continual activity of refining and making more precise the church's understanding of detailed points of interpretation of individual verses or matters of doctrine or ethics. So, amen. So, again, explore new areas of understanding the teachings of Scripture. So, the third thing that he mentioned is, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm going to read this before I get to this third point. He mentioned that every scholar who deeply loves God's word will soon realize that there is much more Scripture than can be learned in any one lifetime. I promise you that, man, I've been in this game for, for a long time. And all I'm doing is just growing the more I read. And what I mean by that is there are things that I'm reading after uh, that. I've probably read six, seven, eight times or more that I'm still gaining new understanding. It's just expanding. Just like I said, that light, if you guys seen it, it's like a globe, you pull the, the, the cord, boom, it expands out. You know, you see, you see the actual bulb in it, right? So I'm pretty sure I expand the floor pay, uh, space, you know, as far as the lighting. I just saw it at Ikea. But anyway, um, neat light. But the point of the matter is, is that when I actually read the scriptures, just like in Joshua, <laughs> oh, my goodness, man, these things, as I slow down and look at them, it's like, oh, my gosh. And then even the other day when I went back and looked at leave you and forsake you, again, it got to expand it even more. So it's not as if that I could cover the scriptures and now I know everything with them. No, absolutely not. It is, it's like God's knowledge is, is vast, it's infinite. So and although we have a book with, with uh, that's uh, finite, meaning the, the words, the word count and stuff like that, there's infinite knowledge in it. That, that's what I want to convey. There's infinite knowledge and spiritual value in the word, although we have, you know, we could go from beginning to end. It's finite in that aspect. So, but anyway, the third thing is they can defend, talking about the role of uh, teachers, right? Or scholars, sorry. They can defend the teachings of the Bible against text by other scholars or those who specialize in technical training. Because that's true. And look, some references it, uh, references are uh, Titus 1.9. Uh, you can look at, uh, and, and another one, you can look at 2 Timothy 2.25. And uh, Titus 2, 7 through 8, right? So, and it's talking about correcting his opponents with gentleness. So, um, so yeah, that's what we do, right? Um, and I'm not clarifying myself as a scholar, but that's what we do to defend the teachings, you know? So if you know it, you defend it as well. Uh, and then the fourth one, which is the last one, said they can supplement the study of scripture for the benefit of the church. Bible scholars often have training that will enable them to relate the teachings of Scripture to the rich history of the church and to make the interpretation of Scripture more precise and its meaning more vivid with a greater knowledge of the languages and cultures in which the Bible is written. Because, look, some of us, uh, I've been through Greek, I've been through Hebrew. Um, I, if I look at Greek words, I can pronounce them to a standpoint. I know many of them just by looking at them. Um, I can, if you give me a passage of scripture, I can actually read it in Greek, you know, stuff like that. Right. <clears throat> Does that make me better than you? No, not at all. Cause guess what? You see, you have that same access. Uh, let me show you this real quick. So I'm in blue letter Bible, right? So this is apostolos. Now there'll be, uh, various dialect in how to, our pronunciation, right. From people depending upon dialect and stuff, uh, stuff like that. But if you go here to blue letter Bible, and uh, OK, I want to know what you know, um, Apostolos is. You can look it up or how to say it. Strong's G652. Sure. Apostolos. Is but anyway, um, Apostolos. Is it still going? Yeah. So anyway, it, it, it should say it. If it didn't, I apologize because I transitioned from something to this. And uh, I think I lost sound because I can't I couldn't hear the countdown. And I usually can't. 
but regardless, um, you have access to actually listen to the word actually being spoken in Greek, the word being spoken in Hebrew. You have access to those things. You do. So don't sit here and live in ignorance, right? So, okay, good. You can hear it. So don't sit in ignorance and go, well, you know, I don't know Hebrew or Greek and you do. You have access to it. I just showed you. And, and this is blueletterbible.org is free to everybody. So you can go there to look at your Greek, Hebrew, if you want to, to understand like meaning of your words. And I would encourage people to do so. And there's a reason why, because you will expand upon that, just like I gave you that example where I will not leave you or forsake you. So being able to expand upon that just by understanding the uh, um, the Greek word or the he in that case, the Hebrew word. Right. So. All right. So just don't think that because someone has that level of degree that they are better than you, um, no more than you. Therefore, you know what they say, uh, basically their word is bond. No, uh, -uh it's not. Go, go in. There's supplement to that because a lot of us are, we're you know, blessed by God to go through those avenues as far as our education. So for me, the military enabled me to get a religion degree and uh, um, uh, a undergraduate in religion, um, a graduate degree in human services counseling and a graduate degree in pastoral counseling, all from Liberty University. Like I tell people that doesn't just make me a counselor or a therapist, but those degrees were all, you know, God centric Christian worldview. So I had to learn hermeneutics and exegesis and put together sermons and all these other things, not only in you know my undergraduate degree, but through all of those those three degrees. Right. So I'm well school, well versed to that level. So there's a level of teaching that I can give you know, to people when it comes to these things or a level of knowledge that I have, right? And a level of things I pointed out, I got resources galore. Thank God for that. However, there's people with doctorate degrees that specialize in certain areas. So they, they are supplements for me and my study as well. And thank God for that. So, you know, and that's what it's being said here. Um, so hopefully you understand as far as the clarity of scripture, the point that I want to hammer home is it's clear to everybody that seeks the Lord and wants to do what God has commanded us to do. Right. So it, it's, it's clear to the spirit led people. There may be some things that you may have questions about, but please don't walk away from this thinking and, and, or continue to think I'm too ignorant. I don't know these things. I would never know them, you know? So, you know, I wasn't educated. How dare you? Don't, don't think of that matter. One thing you're doing in, in that regard is that you're actually undermining the power of the Holy Spirit in teaching you because he is the one that guides us into all truth. So don't think that you're ignorant, not qualified to be able to understand the scriptures and interpret it properly. You are. You are. And you should have supreme confidence, not in yourself, but in the Lord, that, that the Holy Spirit will teach you these things. Right. So there's a few questions that I had. Um, in here uh, for per personal application. I think it, they were pretty good. Um, basically, it, it one of the questions, you know, that I have here is uh, observing the diversity of scriptures or diversity of interpretation of scripture. Some conclude people can make the Bible say anything they want. How do you think Jesus will respond to this statement? So how do you, how do you think Jesus will respond to people saying the Bible can make uh, or people can make the Bible say anything they want. How would you respond to that? And I know I only have a few on here and I give it a few seconds because I know there's a 10 second uh, delay. Um, one of the other ones that I ask is this is does the doctrine of clarity of scripture mean that the new testament can be fully understood by people who do not have access to an old testament so again i'll ask that question again does the doctrine of clarity mean that the new testament can be fully understood by people who do not have access to an old testament so that's a good question and maybe something that people need to meditate on right so I know I, I don't have many people who are interested in this particular subject tonight. No, live. 
maybe they'll go back and watch it later on. But I, I will promise you, because I, I believe this wholeheartedly, that this is something that is you know, valuable to our, our faith and maturity um, and that you may wind up getting into a discussion regarding this one day. So this is these are matters as far as building blocks like Legos, building blocks in order for us to uh, grow and mature equip. And I'm I'm very reserved and resolute in this whole equipment, people. Right. Because I think uh, uh, th this is exactly what we need. It's too many people looking for some of the sidebars instead of actually being taught. They're looking for the controversial things that are going on and for people to talk about that stuff versus actually being equipped with the word of God. So, you know, and that's that's what I'm here for. And it doesn't bother me as far as, uh, you know, the other things that go on as far as around me. Um, so those who misandle scripture will be judged harsher. Absolutely. You need to know that the word you are speaking, teaching is correct. So, yeah. So um, and, and I do. I do believe Jesus will rebuke him in that manner. So as far as, you know, warning them regarding the mishandling of scripture. I promise you, if you mishandle scripture and you do it out of ignorance, God, I believe I know God is a forgiving God. Out of ignorance, there's I believe that forgiveness. However, the person who does it, you know, for their own personal gain, who purposely twist it, we just saw in Second Peter, it's going to lead to their own destruction, or it's to their own destruction, right? They do it on purpose. So for them, nah, they just do it purposely, just uh whatever. So they will be rebuked and warn regarding as far as uh, their twisting of scripture. When it comes to, as far as the doctrine of the clarity of scripture, um, does that the doctrine of clarity of scripture mean that the New Testament can be fully understood by people who do not have access to an Old Testament? Uh, one of the things that you, you definitely have to keep in mind as you, you think and meditate on that is, uh, is the fact that the... Uh, apostles did not have a new testament these are writings that developed from thoughts of the old testament right so things that were currently going on that they were taught being reminded of stuff like that right so as you think about those things as far as the clarity of scripture mean that the new testament can be fully understood by someone who does not have the old testament think about that so and, and you know you can answer it in your own time you can you know uh put a comment in here if you would like uh but i think that's a, a really good question really good question because we're we live in a world where we have it we have the what we have uh considered the full canon of scripture right so and having that i think sometimes we take for granted the fact that these apostles were actually illuminating the truth um and fulfillment of the old testament you know and these what these this is what the writings produce along with the illumination of truth you know uh from the holy spirit as far as you know jesus teaching and what's going on now because not every every letter has quotations from the old testament in it you know what i mean so um not every letter is guided by some type of old testament quotation you know um or or basically that teaching was the the foundation of why they wrote that letter or, or old testament narrative or whatever it was interjected in there the the supplement in regards to the teachings of christ but also we got to understand that christ is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets right in the psalms so in that question, that last one was, or the other one was, does, does the doctrine of clarity of scripture mean that the New Testament can be fully understood by people who do not have access to an Old Testament? So can the New Testament be fully understood by people who don't have access to an Old Testament? So, um, and does doctrine of clarity uh, mean that? Um, I have one more here. Um Let's see, what was it? Um, hold on. Matter of fact, I think that was it.
Yeah, that, that'd be it. So, all right. Because the rest of them, he has plenty more. But I think those two are good enough as far as uh, for us to kind of think on and stuff like that, right? Maybe discuss with one another. It'd be good, too, if you have uh, uh, family members, you know, to, to have a conversation with those two questions I asked or whatever and, and have a discussion on it, not an argument, but a discussion on that and, and see what each other's point of view is. So, you know, when we get to this whole idea of, of interpretation that we must understand again, and the final time I said this, is that you're not unqualified. You are not unqualified if you are so-called untrained. And what I mean by untrained, uneducated, so to speak. If you're not one who went through some type of college education or or learn in some, you know, your church classes or whatever it is, you are not unqualified when it comes to knowing the word of God. Again, clarity of scripture. You know, it's, we're talking about those who are seeking God and to do his will. It will be made known to you because the scriptures promise that it's the role of the Holy Spirit. That's what he would do. So I believe in that. I believe individuals will be guided into all truth by the Holy Spirit. So, amen. So, um, again, to go hand in hand, we should have both. All scriptures important. I say they need all, especially today. So, yeah, it, when it comes to the clarity of scripture, you know, I'm able to understand some things from the Old Testament. However, uh, not everything. I do believe that we need both as far as clarity, because what Jesus said again was, no, he didn't came to come to abolish. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. So yeah, he, in the scriptures testify of him. So when it comes to the New Testament, I can read in the New Testament, you know, gain information regarding the old. However, there's a lot of things in the Old Testament that I'm missing that shows the fulfillment, you know, our, our basic point to who Christ is, the, the shadows that, you know, I believe that we have to look back at. So can I clearly understand the New Testament without the old? My answer would be uh, I can understand what the New Testament writing is, but I do need an old in order to support what's actually being said. Because remember, it says that no, uh, that the scriptures were, were written by the prophets, but they were prompted under the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> and the prophets we know of that he's referring to is in the Old Testament. So, amen. Um, I want to thank my wife for definitely engaging in the discussion. Uh, uh, definitely appreciate you and your support. Everybody else who watch, I appreciate your support as well. Thank you. Hopefully you gained a lot from this. If you didn't, then no, I, I did my job. <laughs> I'm not disappointed in it. It's a lot of information, but I did my job. Uh, love you guys. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this time, Lord. We thank you, God, for the discussion tonight. Uh, Lord, I do pray that uh, those that, that listen or take the time to listen, Lord, that uh, you continue to give them knowledge and understanding, Lord, uh, in order for them to know you better. Uh, Father, may we continue, Lord, to uh, seek your face. Uh, may we be motivated, Lord, to uh, uh, know you. And, and Lord, may we also, in knowing you, God, uh, demonstrate your your actions lord um christ likeness in this world lord not only towards one another but also towards our enemies as well uh father we thank you lord for the understanding of clarity of scripture and what it means is that as we seek you lord as we seek to do your will god that there is no good thing that's withheld from us and what's better than your word nothing so when we this truth that's out there when we search you, Lord, not for our own purposes or to fulfill some type of thing, Lord, and, and in order to glorify us. But when we seek your word, Lord, in order to know you and to glorify you, God, I know that information will not be withheld. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the teachers, the scholars, um, all those that are involved. We thank you, Lord, for the supplementary teaching that they give us. We thank you, Lord, for uh, what we know thus far. And Father, we continue to rely upon you. Let us not walk away thinking that we're unqualified, that we're ignorant, but know, Lord, that we have supreme confidence in you, Holy Spirit, that you will teach us and guide us into all truth and you'll testify of Jesus. So we thank you. We love you. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen.